Here's a rig for carbon dioxide and tank heating, which apply the carbon dioxide loaded warmed water through the substrate of the tank. They percolate up out of the substrate past the roots of the plants rather than being introduced into the water in the, in the middle of the tank. Why? Well, as somebody uh, observed, you're not keeping fish, you're keeping water. If you maintain a well-balanced, um, very healthy aquatic garden with proper light levels, properly, proper energy input, proper microbial uh, colonies, uh, bacteriological colonies, and your plants are healthy, your fish are pretty much going to take care of themselves. Uh, not that the fish are utterly insignificant, but they are not a critical part of the ecosystem. What you're going to do here is you're going to look after the whole health of the ecosystem, and the plants are absolutely critical to that. If you really want to establish a complete nitrogen cycle and, and several of the other uh, ecological cycles, it's your plants that are going to be the object of your focus. Then throw the fish in and let them decorate the tank for all intents and purposes. Out in the real world, in the tropics, where the tropical plants grow, the tropical roots of those tropical plants are at tropical temperatures. But that's not the case in this house here. If we've got a heater immersed in this tank and the water is being warmed up to say, I don't know, 76, 78 degrees. The reason we're doing that with a heater is that the house is not at that temperature. Well, if the house is below that temperature, below tropical temperature, the substrate is below that temperature too, because frankly, there is no heat in a typical system percolating down through the substrate. The substrate is going to be at ambient temperature for the room that the tank is in. In order to offset that, we're going to take the heated water and we're going to send it up through the substrate, through the gravel. It's also where we're going to inject, because we're going to take that heated water first and inject carbon dioxide into it. And the reason to load up that uh, water with readily absorbable carbon by the plants is that that's what's really going to drive uh, explosive plant growth. It's what's going to enable us to increase the light levels in the tank and not end up with a massive algae bloom because the plants are going to outcompete the algae. Right? If we don't add the CO2, then all we're going to get if we add more light is a tank full of algae. This is a matter for a separate discussion. Here we're just here to talk about the fluid flow and let's get into the mechanics of it all. At the bottom of the tank is an under gravel filter, which is no longer going to be used for that purpose. An under gravel filter is a really horrible design anyway. The concept is just wrong. Uh, it's, it's not a decent filtering system, it's kind of a bitch to clean. We're going to use it the other way. We're not going to take water out of the system, we're not going to suck through the under gravel system, we're going to push water through it. Let's start with the carbon dioxide. Industrial carbon dioxide tank Regulator drops the pressure down to something we can use. I mean, barely, uh, you know, one to three pounds, if that much. We're barely allowing a trickle of air to go in through that hose. And the hose goes to that solenoid valve, that little electrical operated valve. The valve is plugged into uh, that wall wart power supply back there. It looks like a power supply, but in fact, all it is is a switch. It's a switched power supply, which is driven by that pH meter. When the pH meter determines that the water's become more alkaline, when the pH is going up, in other words, and acid levels are no longer severe enough to, uh, to keep the pH down, then the pH meter alarms, it activates that little box into which is plugged that white cord or the white plug. Power is applied to the, uh, the solenoid apparated valve. The valve opens and CO2 flows throttled by this tiny little throttle valve. You'll get a zoom in on all of this stuff in a moment. Through this hose, around and up into that first cylinder. And that first cylinder is the carbon dioxide injector. In a typical CO2 injection system, that injector is a very expensive piece of gear. It's probably 100 bucks plus. 
partly because it has to be manufactured to high tolerances. It has to allow a whole bunch of things to happen. It has to percolate gas into the water and it has to do it in such a way that it doesn't leak. Well, we're going to eliminate all the need for fine workmanship here because we're sticking it in the tank. Doesn't matter if the thing leaks a little bit. I'm pretty secure about my workmanship on this thing. It's not a big leaker, but the fact is I used to have to fuss and worry about this this carbon dioxide injector all the time and where if it was dribbling it made me very frustrated stick it in the tank you no longer have that issue the hose lets the co2 in we'll get into the details of how the injection works there's a the hose continues down to the bottom of the injection goes up into this little bottle here, this, this sort of small pill bottle looking thing that's inside the injector. Why? Because it doesn't matter if it leaks. You'll follow me. The water bubbles up one bubble at a time through that. It forms our bubble counter so that we can see how much gas is actually flowing out of the cylinder and is actually going into the water. And from the top of that little pill bottle, you'll get the uh, close up view in a moment, a hose leads the gas down and into that little cylinder there, which is an air stone, a ceramic air stone. Air stones are, are generally um, chewed up by the stuff flowing through them. They almost all crumble and fall apart. You need a ceramic air stone to avoid the highly acidic water that you're going to pump into it. Once you've added CO2 to the water, the carbolic acid content of the, uh, of the water goes way up. The pH of the water drops inside the tank you're going to have a real nice pH that's good for the plants, but inside the injector, it's going to be hellaciously acidic. Your air stone is going to take the, the real brunt of it. So it's important that nothing in your injection system is going to be chewed up by the acid. The air stone allows gas to percolate it up into the water column. The water column is being fed by a pump. Now the pump is inside this sawed off juice bottle down here. The juice, the pump, the little submersible pump, is surrounded by filter material, sponge on top, and then some aquarium gravel. Because the aquarium gravel can be vacuumed out very easily. That's the best way to clean it. You don't want to have to dig the pump out, clean out the sponge, put it all back in there. You can if you want, and you might have to do it uh, at periods, but most of your gunk going, getting sucked in by the pump is going to be vacuumable off the top through that layer of gravel that's sitting in that little cup. Here's the outlet hose. Goes up through this U-bend and is poured down through the column in the diffuser assembly. It leaves the bottom of the diffuser assembly and makes another vertical trip, still under pump pressure, up to here where it pours freely into this open tube. This open column, it is right up here, it is open to the atmosphere, right at this point, fills up with water and discharges under the weight of that water column out through the under gravel filter, which has been repurposed as an inlet plenum. It stuck into this plastic column, bottom of column, top of column. Stuck in there is an electrical heater. So the water that came out of the diffuser is now pouring over an immersed heater. That heated injected water goes into the under gravel filter and percolates back out through the, through the gravel. 